But we can stand for certain that the word is true. And that we can stand on it no matter what happens in society. The word still stays true. It's been through the fire. Many times there's been cultures that have tried to destroy the word of God. They tried to burn Bibles. And yet God's words, he said that my word shall not pass away. Praise God. And we have the word of God today that we can read the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Praise God. We have the Bible as our guide map to get to heaven. It's like a lost treasure. You see, there's novels and movies and everything about lost treasures and searching for lost treasure. Well, the greatest lost treasure is heaven. And we know the map. We have the road map to get there. Praise God. In order to do that, we have to follow the truth that's in the word. Because if you don't follow the truth, you don't get to heaven. And we have the roadmap, and that everyone needs to know the roadmap. Proverbs 23 23, buy the truth and sell it not, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Praise God. Buying the truth. In, in Matthew 13, we find a few parables. And a parable in the Bible is a story, an earthly story that has a hidden message. And that hidden message is a heavenly uh, meaning to it. And he taught the disciples and the people in, this, uh, in parables, and a lot of times they didn't get it. And so he, and Jesus would have to explain himself. So here we find one of those parables in Matthew 33 and 14 to 52. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hideth, and for the joy of it goeth and selleth all he has and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast in the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered all the goods in the vessel, but the bad they cast away. And so shall it be at the end of the world that the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just, and they shall cast them into the furnace of fire, and they shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. But Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? Then they say unto him, Yea, Lord. And he said unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which bringeth forth out treasures, things new and old. So the treasure is the gospel, it's the word of God, the good news that Jesus came, he died for our sins, that, and that we can live a holy life unto God. So the gospel is that field in the first one where the treasure was buried in, and that person went and bought everything because that's how much he treasured it. Um, through the gospel, we find the salvation which leads to eternal life with Jesus Christ. And that is worth uh, everything that we go through in this life because we know that the next life will be better if we're walking with the Lord. So the, the good news is, uh, is Jesus coming down, is God coming down in the form of a man and walking among us and dying for our sins. The, the very God who created that just spoke this world, everything we see in this world, he just spoke in his existence. That same God humbled himself and put on flesh and walked among us so that we may have eternal life. That is the good news. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't serve a God that's on a cross. Praise God. But he rose again the third day. Praise God. And he took the keys of death and of hell. Praise God. Mark 1 Verse 1 to 8, in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto all the land of Judea and they, of Jerusalem, and they were all baptized in, of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Though John the Baptist was preparing the way, and he said, look unto them who will come, whose shoes I'm not worthy. Of course, he was talking about Jesus that was going to come after him, who was going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and a fire. And we saw that on the day of Pentecost when they were all 
120 in the upper room and they were waiting for something to happen and they're all, the Bible says, in one accord. That was a very packed out car. Uh, it, it just went over like lead moon, I see. But here they were in the same spirit. It wasn't a Honda Accord, but they were all there because Jesus, when he left, said, go into and, and wait for me. And, and they were there, they were praying, and a wind came through there, sound like a mighty rushing wind came through, and, and they started speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave evidence, and they saw visible flames on their head because John had said he was going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and a fire. Now, every time we get the Holy Ghost, now there's not a flame that goes on. That was a sign proving what John the Baptist had said. He's going to baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. But it was to show them that what John was preaching is coming forth. It was just an example to all the others. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of of skin around his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and he preached, saying, There cometh one the mighty year than after me, whose latches the shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I have indeed baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The next parable talks about a pearl of great price, and the man sold everything. He was a collector, I guess, and he sold everything he had to buy this one pearl of great price. Well, we have a pearl in the Word of God. Praise God, it is the Word of God. And it's our salvation for our soul. Praise God, because the Bible says there's no other way that men can be saved other than the name of Jesus. Praise God, there's only one faith, one baptism that's in the Word of God, and that's the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God, the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every name... or will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whether you do it now or whether you do it later, that's up to you, but I want to do it now. I want to confess that Jesus is my Lord. Praise God. I want his name upon me. Praise God. That's why when we go down in the baptism of water, the Bible says going down, calling on the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is Jesus Christ. That's why we baptize in the name of Jesus, because there is no name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. Praise God. He is God of the Old Testament, Jehovah God in the New Testament. He is the fulfillment of his name. Jesus means Jehovah salvation. He became our salvation, praise God. And he died on the cross for us. God is a spirit. We cannot see a spirit and a spirit cannot die. So he had to create a body for himself so that he could die on the cross for our sin. That he could be that, the Bible says, a lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Praise God. God knew that we would sin, that mankind would sin and disobey him. And so he had another plan, and this was his plan. Praise God that he would come himself and die in our place. Because the Bible says, the soul that sins, it shall die. Praise God. But when we are covered under the blood, under his name, because he died for our sins, it's his blood that washes away our sins. Praise God. Because when, we when we're called on his name in baptism, we are calling his blood over us. That cleanses, because his blood is what cleanses us from all sins. Praise God. His blood, the Bible says, makes us whiter than snow. Because it, it washes away our sins. If you're baptized any other way, you haven't called on the name. Your blood hasn't been applied to your life. Therefore, you went down a wet sinner and come, or dry sinner and came up a wet one. That's why we baptize in Jesus' name. Because there's power in his name. Praise God. The Bible said what you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus. And that encompasses all. What does all mean? It means all. Everything we do, we live in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. And therefore, we should baptize in Jesus' name. Because it's the only name that saves. Praise God. And that's the pearl that he was talking about. Buy the truth and sell it not. We have the truth. There's been so many dis distortions of truth if you, if that went away. One of the apostles said, if I or an angel teach you anything other than I brought to you today, let him be accursed. And the truth has been watered down. It's been changed, but his word never changes. Praise God. This is, we teach 
We're an apostolic church. We teach the book of Acts. We preach the book of Acts. We live the book of Acts. We are the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the only book in the Bible that does not have a close to it because we are living in the book of Acts. Praise God. The Holy Ghost is still for us today. Praise God. Some people say, well, it's an option. It's just an icing on a cake. No, it's not. It's required for salvation. If you look through all of the book of Acts 9, 10, 19, you see when they went down the, and they spoke in other tongues, you see there was a group of people and they were walking and, and they met up with a prophet and they said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we haven't heard of anything that there be a Holy Ghost. And they were rebaptized in Jesus' name and they were filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. Praise God. It's for today. It hasn't passed away. Not yet, until Jesus comes again and spirits removed off this earth. But for now, it's still necessary for salvation, as long as being baptized. Some people say, well, it doesn't matter how I get baptized. Well, it does. If you have a check and you write father on that check, that's not going to work. If you write son on a check, it's not going to work. Or in that case, Holy Ghost, it's not going to work. You have to write the name on it. Jesus. Or David, or whoever it is you're signing off on. It's your name on that check. Well, when you get baptized, Jesus is signing his name on your life, that you're a child of his. Praise God. And that's the pearl that we need to buy and not ever let go of. Not let it, other people talk us any differently because this is the, the truth that was brought into Scripture. This was the truth that was set out by the apostles. And, and any other doctrine is cursed because the apostle said, if anybody brings any other gospel than this, whether it be me or an angel or anybody else tries to bring any other gospel, there is no new revelations. There is none. It's, this is salvation. This is the way to go. The Bible says there's a narrow gate and there's a broad road that leads to destruction. And, and few are to find that, that narrow gate. And that narrow gate is salvation. That narrow gate is baptism through Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people on the road to Christianity, but there are only few that find that narrow gate, and that narrow gate is in Jesus' name. The Bible says if you try any other way, you're a thief and a robber. You can't get in any other way. There is, there is, no, there is no other way to get it. There is only one way to do it, and it's important on how we are saved. Praise God. Praise God. And that's how we need to live our life. So Acts 2 and 38, uh, Acts 2, 37, we'll start 37. Now when they heard this, so they were all gathered here. And this is after they crucified Christ, obviously. And now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What do we do about our sin? We killed our Savior, right? Then Peter said to them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. It said you shall. It's not you might, you may, you shall receive. Or you will receive. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as the many of the Lord of God shall call 2,000 years later. And that's far off. And with many other words, you testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself to, from this untoward generation. We have to do something about it. We hear the gospel, we can take it or leave it. Are you going to buy the truth or sell it? Or are you going to leave it? Buying the truth and selling it not. Save yourselves. We can't get into heaven on someone else's relationship, someone else's experience with God. We have to have it for ourselves as individual. And they that are gladly to receive his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. It's very simple. Three steps. Repent of your sin. That means asking God to forgive you of your sins, and, and he'll wash, and he'll take our sins away. It's just talking to God and like you talk to a friend and ask him to forgive us. 
and being baptized in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Ghost are just three simple steps. And that's the pearl of great price. So there's no other ticket into heaven. There's no, no other way to get there. In the last parable in this text, in verse 49, it talks about the kingdom of heaven is like a net which was cast in the sea and gathered of every kind. And we were full, drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels and the bad they cast away. That's, that's when Jesus comes back again. He's going to take every, everybody and the ones that have been saved, the one that has his name stamped on them in baptism and are living a Christian godly life. They are the good. The ones that didn't receive Christ, those are the ones that were cast away into everlasting burning flames. And there's different analogies. There's different parables. Like the one where the farmer went and feed, uh, sowed his his uh, wheat in the in the field, and as it grew, there were thorns and thistles that came up, and our servants came to the master and said, what, what happened here? You planted, didn't you plant good seed? And he said, yes, I planted good seed. What happened is the enemy came in and, and planted weeds in there. And, and the servant's like, well, should we go and tear up the weeds? And he said, no, you can't tear up the weeds unless you pull the weed out with it. But when they harvest that wheat, the wheat, went into the barns and all those weeds got burnt in fire. Same analogy. When Jesus comes again, the, the good is the the good will be going to heaven and the other ones will be cast into fire. There's there's many different scenarios that the Bible talks about it. And it should goes to show the importance of how we are saved. In Matthew 22, 1 to 14, we find another parable. This is one about a king who had a, a wedding for a son, and, and uh, no one that was invited wanted to come. So he said, well, just go into, go into the streets and just compel people to come. Just invite people to come to that wedding feast. And the host provided garments for everyone that came in. Because if they were taking people off the street, they probably weren't preparing for a wedding. So he put clothes, they gave him clothing. But there was one guest decided that his clothing was good enough. That he wasn't going to take this the garments that the master of the feast set out. And he was kicked out. And that's, that's the same with salvation. It was referring to that again, that we have a choice. We can put on that garment or we can reject that garment. Choice is up to us. The, the, the balls are court, as it were. We have the choice. Are we going to put on that wedding garment? Are we going to clothe ourselves in that garment? Are we going to follow the plan of salvation and put on that wedding garment. Are we going to do that? And then another one in Matthew 25. You see, the kingdom of heaven shall be like in ten virgins which took their lamps, went forth to meet the bridegroom, and five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. So the foolish ones just burnt their oil and had a party. And, so that's, and the, the, the wise ones saved their oil. Because their job was to light the way. And the call came out. The, the bridegroom cometh. The bridegroom cometh. You're just basically saying, get ready. Get your lamps all ready. Turn them on. Get them ready because the bridegroom is coming. And the foolish had burnt out. They said, we don't have enough oil. We, It's all gone. And can we have some of yours, and they're like, the, the wise are like, not a chance. Not a chance. Go and find someone that will sell you some oil and come back. But by that time, the bridegroom came and the door was locked. And so those 
five foolish virgins came to knock on the door and, and they said, well, we don't know you. You can't come in. And that's like, again, it's salvation. That we live our lives as Christians. We live our lives a godly life so that when he comes again, we haven't just wasted our oil. We just haven't burned up our talents, as it was, our abilities for what we want to do and for our own selfish things. But we live life as a servant for God. We live for Christ. We live for him every day. We like That doesn't mean we're not going to make mistakes because God knows all of us are going to make mistakes. But we get up again and we keep on going. And we, and we do our best to serve him. And we follow him. We read our Bible. We pray. We go to church. And, and we're an example, light unto others. By the truth. And sell it not. By the truth. He is coming again. He's coming again. He's coming again. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Jesus is coming again. And they've been talking about it for years and years and years. And people say, well, this is old news. This is just, just old news. But he is coming again. You have to remember that one day is a thousand years of God and a thousand days is, is one year. So we have to remember that his time scheme is much, much different than ours. But with all the things, he has given us warnings in his word to look out for, things to, to see coming, and he's coming again. There's, there's no two ways about it. And the time is coming closer and closer and closer with all the things that we're seeing. Jesus is coming again for a bride that's going to be ready for him, that hasn't wasted their oil, but is ready to meet him. Praise God. And they asked him, saying, Master, when shall these things be? And what sign shall be when these things come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you not be deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when you shall hear the wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by. And he said to them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilence and fierce, fearful sights, and great signs shall be in from the heavens. And But before all these things, they should lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and the prisons. And you brought for kings and rulers and and martyred for Jesus Christ. He's coming again. He's coming again. And he's made sure in his word that he prepares us. Basic instructions before leaving earth. He, he's given us what we need to know when it's coming again. The disciple, disciples asked him, when are you coming again? And, and, and God gave them words to write. But they didn't, they didn't know what's happening. He says, I'm, I'm going to go to prepare a place for you. He's coming again. There's a song that says, Jesus is coming to come. He's coming again to take from the world his own. And the Bible says, his sheep know his voice. His sheep know his voice. And we're, as a church, we're called his sheep. And we know the voice of Christ because we're walking with him. We're talking with him. We have that communication with God. So we are, we'll be ready when he comes. Praise God. Because we're watching for his coming. Because we see the signs that are written in his word. And we're watching for him. The Bible says, diligently we seek after him. You see, the, the, the wise men... They were told of a star, and they were diligently seeking Christ, and they found him. The star rested upon where he was. He was around two years old. You see Christmas, Christmas scenes, and you see the wise men in the, in the manger set. Well, that's not very accurate, because the wise men weren't there when he was born. Because We see that Herod put out a decree to kill all the baby boys 
two years old and younger. So he, it was in that area. And the wise men came. They followed a star from a great far to see Jesus. And still today, wise men still seek Jesus. Wise men still seek Jesus. They brought their gifts of they laid it before gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They put before Jesus. And the greatest thing that we can give Jesus is ourselves. Amen. That we can give him of ourselves. The Bible says we are a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. That's the greatest thing that we give Jesus is us. That, he, that we'll allow him to use us. He wants to use every one of us. He's knocking at the door. The Bible says he knocks at our door. He's not going to bust it down. He's not going to put his shoulder against the door and run at it to bust it down. He's a gentleman. He's just going to knock. It's up to us this morning if we're going to open up the door of our hearts and let him in. Are we going to, are we going to buy that pearl of great price? The gospel that he came, that he he died, he rose again for us because he loved each and every one of us. There was two thieves on, one on each side of Jesus as he died. And at first they were both saying, well, if you're God, just get us all off. And then, then one of them had a change of heart. And he said to Jesus before he died, remember me in paradise. He was, he was asking forgiveness for his ways. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He was forgiven right there and then. Jesus is just waiting for us to open that door. No matter what we've done, what we've said, what, where we've been, there's no sin that's too great. There's nothing too great for God to forgive us. Amen. By the truth and sell it not. When all this, when everything ends, we can't take anything with us. What we've accomplished in this life, all the toys we, we can get, all the houses and whatever, it's not going to make up to a hill of beans. Chasing the American dream. Keeping up with the Joneses. None of that's going to make any difference in the light of eternity. It's going to be meaningless. But what we do for Jesus will stand. The, the time we spent on our knees in prayer, giving to the poor, talking to people that are hungry and thirsty for Christ, those who are lost without hope, everything we do for Jesus will stand. And that's what's going to count for eternity. The Bible talks about putting our money putting our heart into the kingdom of God, but not putting it where moth corrupts and thieves break through and steal. To the thing on this earth is just temporary. The Bible says our lives are just but a vapor that's there for a moment and vanish away. You ever have a boil water on the stove or have a tea kettle? You see the vapor and then it's there and then it's gone? Well, that's our lives are just like that. In, in the light of Eternity, right? Like the Olson Bible, they lived a lot longer, up to 900 and some years. It's a long time, or whatever it was. But that's nothing, even that, in the light of eternity. There will be no time. When Jesus comes again, there will be no more time. There will be nothing. It will be forever. It's infinity. And that's, that's going to be eternity. And we can choose today to buy the truth and sell it not. We are the author of our own destiny. We choose Christ or we can reject him. And in doing so, we choose our destiny, where we're going to end up for eternity. I want to make heaven my home. I want to hear a good and faithful servant. Even faithful or a few things, I'll make you ruler over many.
I want to hear that good and faithful servant. I want to hear, I want, that's what I want to hear. I don't want to be, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. It, it's not about this building. It's, that's not what's about the, the body, the people. That's what make up the church. We are the body of Christ, the Bible says. We are the bride. We work together. And it's, it's not about all this. It's about having a relationship. It's not about religion. Religion is what man wants to give God. But relationship is what God wants for man. He wants to know you. He says, uh, he'll say to the wicked, I never knew you because they never had that relationship. They never had that salvation experience. I never knew you. You weren't baptized in my name. I don't know you. I don't know you. That's how important it is. I want, I want his name stamped all over me. I want to be full of the Holy Ghost and overflowing. Amen. Praise God. I want to make heaven my home. And I want to lead as many others as possible. I want to be a witness. I want my life to be example. I want my light to shine in this darkened world more than it's ever shone before. I want to be a witness. I want to be a true disciple of Christ. I want to be a servant of Christ. And that others may see Christ in me. Because we may be the only Jesus that people see. They may not step in these doors. but So we need to be an example of what a Christian really is. Praise God. Let's all stand. If you haven't accepted Jesus into your life, I invite you to do so. Just, it's simple. Just talk to Christ. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. And he will. We have water. We can heat it up. And be, if you want to be baptized. And be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking out of tongue as the Bible says is necessary. You can have that today. If you've never spoken tongues before, you can have that today. Praise God. It's for today. It's important. By the truth and sell it not. By the truth and sell it not. By the truth and sell it not. We've been given the gift. The enemy has blinded the minds of a lot of people into believing that they don't need these things. It doesn't matter who we're baptized in. and It doesn't matter if you have the Holy Ghost or not. But that's not true. That's the enemy sowing tares into the field. And it does matter. To that when, when the end, when the harvest is reaped, there's only one way through that narrow gate that leads to everlasting life. Praise God, Tracy, if you would come. Let's take a few moments and worship. Oh mm-hmm.